Mrs. Kate at the Library of Whispers. And today I have three more ghostly reports from old newspapers. This first one is from the Dundee Evening Telegraph from the 26th of January 1891. It is titled so far 
assistance of her sister. The figure in the naval uniform now immediately stood before them. The eye of the lady were fixed on him with a gaze of silent and motionless surprise and a painful intensity of feeling. Her lips were colourless and apart, and her breath passed heavily from the full and overburdened heart. The form was close upon them. It approached her side. It paused, but for an instant, as quick as thought, a low and scarcely audible voice whispered in her ear, There is a future state, and the figure moved onward through the retiring aisle of the minster. The father of the lady arrived to the assistance of his daughter, and Mr. Smith, consigning her to his protection, hastened in pursuit of the mysterious visitor. He searched on every side. No such form was to be seen in the long perspective of the path by which the ill-omened stranger had departed. He listened with the most earnest attentiveness. No sound of retreating footsteps was to be heard on the echoing pavement of the cathedral. Baffled in his attempt to discover the object whose presence had thus disturbed the tranquillity of the time, Mr. Smith besought his friends. The lady was weeping on the shoulder of her father. She avoided every inquiry respecting the cause, the seat, and the nature of her illness. It was slight, it was transient, it would immediately be over. She entreated the party to continue their examination of the building, and to leave her again to the protection of her former companion. The request was granted, and no sooner had she thus possessed herself of an opportunity of confidential communication, than she implored him, with a quick and agitated voice, to conceal for a little while the occurrence of which she had been a witness. We shall never be believed. Besides, it were right that my poor dear father should be gradually prepared for the misery that he is destined to undergo. I have seen the spirit, and I have heard the voice of a brother who exists no longer. He has died at sea. We had agreed that the one who died the first should reappear to the survivor, if it were possible, to clear up or to confirm doubts which existed in both our minds. In due time, the account of the event occurred in completion of the spiritual intimation. The brother was indeed no more. His death had happened on the very day and hour in which his form was seen by Mr. Smith and his sister in the North Isle of York Cathedral. as 
they were walking together of the town, he said to Mr. Broom, Yonder comes a ghost. He, seeing nothing, asked him whereabouts it was. The other said, It is over against such a house, and it walks looking upward towards such a side. It has one arm with a glove in its hand. He said, moreover, when it came near them, that they must give way to it, that be ever did so, and some that had not done so have suffered for it. Anon, he said, tis just upon us, let's out of the way. Mr. Broom, believing all to be fiction, took hold of the Dutchman's arm and kept him by force in the way. But as he held him, there came such a force against them that he was flung into the middle of the street, and one of the palms of his hands, and one knee bruised and broken by the fall, which put him for a while to excessive pain. But spying the lieutenant, laying like a dead man, he got up as soon as he could, and applied himself to his relief. With the help of others, he got him into the next shop, where they poured strong water down his throat, but for some time could discover no life in him. At length, what with the strong water, and what with well chafing him, he began to stir, and when he was come to himself, his first words were, I will show you no more ghosts. Then he desired a pipe of tobacco, but Mr. Broom told him he should take it at his house for he feared, should he take it so soon there, it would make him sick. Thereupon they went together to Mr. Broom's house, where they were no sooner entering in, but the bell rang out. Mr. Broom presently sent his maid to learn who was dead. She brought word. It was such a one, a tailor, who died suddenly, though he had been in a consumption a long time, and inquiring after the time of his death, they found it was as punctually as it could be guessed at the very time when the ghost appeared. The ghost had exactly this tailor's known gait, who ordinarily was also with one arm swinging and a glove in that hand, and looking on one side upwards. And below this report, it says, This report was sent to Dr. H. Mayer from Mr. Edward Fowler. At the end whereof, he writes that Dr. Burton, as well as himself, heard it from Mr. Broom's own mouth. And I can add that I also afterwards heard it from his own 